from the Barbados Today Newsroom. This is your news update for Wednesday, May 25. Barbados Today recorded its sixth road fatality. Kadim King, 26 years old, of Waverly Court, St. George, perished after being involved in an accident that occurred around 8.15 this morning along Superlative Road, St. George. King, the driver of a Toyota Corolla, was involved in a collision with an articulated lorry driven by a 40-year-old male. A male passenger was also in the car. They were both removed from the vehicle by fire officers using the jaws of life and taken to the Queen Elizabeth Hospital. King succumbed to his injuries and the passenger is said to be in serious condition. One of the island's business leaders today warned that urgent action is needed to correct some of the social development issues facing the country. President of the Barbados Chamber of Commerce and Industry, Anthony Banker, issued an impassioned call for business leaders to join forces with government to provide support in several areas, including finding ways to shield residents from rising inflation. He suggested that failure to act could have their consequences. The time has come where our business strategy in this small society can no longer be driven primarily by profit. We need to develop or, develop or support programs where none of our children are hungry at school. We need to ensure that genuine cases of need can get sustainable help. We need to work with government to ensure that a basket of basic food items is affordable to all. We need to commit public-private sector partnerships in the provision of social support. Let me read that again. We need to commit to public-private sector partnerships in the provision of social support. We need to support entrepreneurship development in a meaningful way. We need to create job training opportunities to get our at-risk youth off the block. We need to form strategic partnerships with nonprofit organizations who are delivering impactful programs in our communities. Branker also raised questions whether the timing is right as calls mount for pay increases across the public and private sector. Continuing its fight back from the 14% loss of GDP, the government is now faced with the challenge of adjusting public sector wages and salaries. No doubt labor representatives for both the public and private sectors feel justified in their appeals for salary adjustments based upon the current inflation rates. But does this truly address the crisis we face? I suggest we must now exhibit a level of collaboration for sustainability we have never envisioned. It will require temporary systematic change. And this level of change requires collaboration among all stakeholders. Importers of hybrid vehicles are to benefit from a tax holiday similar to that now being enjoyed by importers of electric vehicles. Minister of Energy and Business Development Carrie Simmons made a disclosure on Wednesday afternoon while responding to a question during the BCCI's annual general meeting at the Hilton Resort. The conversation that some of you folks would have had with the Prime Minister, I believe, uh, certainly with the Ministry of Finance, if not with the Prime Minister herself, have borne fruit and that there is the intention of uh, the Prime Minister herself um, being able to make the announcement with respect to hybrids very shortly. So that, if you recall the budget, there was a, 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 a declaration that from the 1st of April, there would have been um, a period of one year during which electric vehicles would have been brought into Barbados at a lower rate of, of, of tariff and that did not apply on the face of the budget to the hybrid vehicles, that um, discrepancy, if you will, will be corrected going forward. In other news this Wednesday, after receiving her third booster shot today, Prime Minister May Motley urged Barbadians to continue to keep up to date with their COVID-19 vaccinations. The Prime Minister also implored citizens to take better care of themselves and to practice healthy habits. She made the comments shortly after getting her blood pressure taken and the booster shot administered as part of a collaborative effort between the University of the West Indies and the Heart and Stroke Foundation this afternoon at Ilara Court. The island's lone infectious disease specialist, the most honorable Dr. Corey Ford, also received his booster shot. I really would like you, Bajans, to take your measurements. One, blood pressure, because a stitch in time is worth 
Nine. Nine. Yes. Okay. Prevention is better than, than cure. cure. <laughs> we know all these sayings, but we need to walk the walk. And secondly, as it relates to the vaccines, if you don't have, get vaccinated. And if you have, get boosted if you need boosted. And, and we can manage these things as we go forward mm -hmm. if everybody or as many people do what they must do to take care of themselves. There's regional and international news after this short break. More oxygen means more energy means more adventure. Cure Oxygen, natural spring water infused with more oxygen to improve your energy, immunity and performance. The next generation of hydration. Cure Oxygen, nature's ultimate water. Caribbean Cool is a refreshing juice drink that contains 100% vitamin C that you can enjoy any time of the day. It has a refreshingly awesome range of Caribbean flavors. Morbi, orange, fruit punch, pineapple, sorrel and pineapple coconut. Suitable for any occasion. Caribbean Cool. The regional news, the Trinidad and Tobago government is lifting more COVID-19 restrictions. Health Minister Terence Dale Singh announced that effective June 1, nationals and non-nationals seeking to enter the country will no longer be required to present a TT travel pass. As of Wednesday, June 1st, 2022, I am authorized by the Honorable Prime Minister uh, to tell the, the country, especially those who travel, that the TT Travel Pass system will be discontinued as of next Wednesday, 2022. Health Minister Terence Dial Singh shared the details of the latest lifting of COVID-19 restrictions during the Health Ministry's weekly COVID-19 update on Wednesday. He explained that while persons are no longer required to provide proof of vaccination status, documentation of a person's COVID-19 status remains. Unvaxxed nationals and non-nationals can enter Trinidad and Tobago so you don't have to prove your vaccination status however you do have to provide either either a negative PCR or an antigen test 48 hours prior to entry the TT Travel Pass was implemented by the Trinidad and Tobago government in July 2021 as a means of screening the COVID-19 status to those scheduled to enter the country. Personal information, including flight details and COVID-19 antigen test results, were to be uploaded prior to boarding as a means of preventing the spread of the COVID-19 virus. On the international scene, the Texas gunman who murdered 19 children and two teachers warned in an online message that he was going to shoot up an elementary school minutes before his rampage. More on this report from Reuters TV. Harrowing details have emerged about the gunman who murdered 19 children and two teachers in Uvalda, Texas on Wednesday in what Governor Greg Abbott called an act of evil. Evil? swept across Uvalde yesterday. 18-year-old gunman Salvador Ramos lived with his grandmother, who he shot in the face just moments before the deadly school rampage. After fleeing their home, he crashed his car near the Robb Elementary School, which he entered through a back door carrying an AR-15 assault-style rifle and wearing tactical gear. Ramos's grandmother survived her wounds and called the police. Governor Abbott said Ramos had telegraphed his deadly intentions moments earlier in messages he wrote on Facebook. He said, I'm going to shoot my grandmother. The second post was, I shot my grandmother. The third post, maybe less than 15 minutes before arriving at the school, was, I'm going to shoot an elementary school. Once in the school, Ramos barricaded himself in a fourth grade classroom and killed students and teachers before he was fatally shot by a U.S. Border Patrol officer. An additional 17 people suffered non-life-threatening injuries. Authorities said that Ramos, a high school dropout, did not appear to have any criminal record or history of mental health problems. 
He had purchased two rifles and 375 rounds of ammunition at the Oasis Outback Sporting Goods Store in Uvalde in March. The small town of Uvalde sits about 80 miles west of San Antonio. Nearly 80 percent of its residents are Hispanic or Latino, according to census data. The community is now left to try to make sense of the massacre. Mario and Irma Chacon spent an agonizing few hours waiting for news of their great-granddaughter, a student at the school, before finally learning she was safe. We were very concerned because we didn't know if she was there or was involved in any way. We just didn't know anything. We were living with, how can I describe it, with a lot of anguish because it was children who were dying. The Texas Rampage stands as the deadliest U.S. school shooting since a gunman killed 26 people, including 20 children, at Sandy Hook Elementary School in Connecticut in December 2012. That's news, but for the very latest, visit our website at www.barbidastoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook. And sign up for our breaking news alerts via WhatsApp. We're also on Izumi Media and Bus Terminals, as well as Screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. You can also hear us on Mix 96.9 FM and Capital Media HD 99.3 FM.